Did Turanaga play everyone? Is Blackthorn truly free? What was Mariko ultimate sacrifice? If you're confused about Shogun ending, you're not alone. Let's break it down together and see what it all means. So, Alright, so let's dive into the heart of Shogun Finale and the mastermind behind it all, Lord Tornaga. Throughout the series, we have seen him as a strategist, always several steps ahead of his enemies, but episode 10 took it to a whole new level. Remember how Tornaga seemingly abandoned Blackthorn? Turns out it was all part of a grand scheme. He knew Blackthorn's presence in Osaka would cause chaos and suspicion, ultimately weakening Ishido's position. Mariko's sacrifice? Tornaga understood that her loyalty and her willingness to die for honor. He used her commitment to his advantage, knowing her actions could expose Ishiro's tyranny and force the council to act. While Yaushigi initially appeared to be an ally, Shoranaga knew his true allegiance lie with Ishido. He cleverly used Yaushigi to deliver the final blow, eliminating a potential threat and solidifying his control. Toronaga discussed this with Yabushigi. Okay, but the price of power. Toronaga's victory comes at a heavy cost. He lost countless soldiers, his trusted advisor Hiromatsu, and even his own son, Nagakaro. The emotional toll of his decisions weighs heavily on him. He understands the loneliness that comes with power, as Itaiko once warned him. Despite his initial doubts, Turanaga ultimately embraced the title of Shogun, recognizing it as a necessary step to unite Japan and achieve lasting peace. He sees himself as the leader who can build a better future for his country, drawing inspiration from the sacrifice of those who came before him. While Turanaga's political control takes center stage, Blackthorn undergoes a profound personal journey in episode 10. He starts as a self-serving adventurer, driven by ambition and survival. However, his experiences in Japan, particularly his relationship with Mariko, and the loss of his ship forced him to confront his own flaws and reevaluate his priorities. This shown in Blackthorn attempt at seppuku is a pivotal moment. While not a true understanding of the Japanese ritual, it signifies his willingness to sacrifice himself for the villagers of Anjiro, a stark contrast to his previous self-preservation instincts. Turanaga recognized this change and spares Blackthorn's life, seeing the potential for a new path. But this is something that I found really odd and really sad. Toronega knew that he was the one that ordered the destruction of the ship, and that Blackthorn later discovered what really happened. So killing all those peoples, knowing that you are the one responsible, shows a dark side to Toronega. But leave your thoughts on this. But now strip off his ship and in the crew, Blackthorn is left with nothing but his newfound sense of purpose and connection to the villagers. But despite finding peace and acceptance, Blackthorn's future remains in question. His role in Turanaga's plan and his ultimate destiny are left open-ended, leaving us to wonder what lies ahead for the English pilot. But now that dream of a dream is the purpose of this episode, is to imagine what's gonna happen or what may happen. The opening scene of episode 10 initially presents itself as a flash forward, showcasing an older Blackthorn at peace with his life is surrounded by children, maybe his grandchildren named Percy and Nigo, and holds a cross which is a Matico's cross. However, the scene takes a surprising turn when it's revealed to be a dream. This revelation adds sadness to Blackthorn's journey and it raised several questions. The dream could be a reflection of Blackthorn's hope and desires for a future life in Japan or a nostalgic glimpse of a life he could have had in England. By revealing this scene as a dream, the show leaves Blackthorn's future open-ended because if you think about it, Hironaga said, that he was never going to leave, that he's going to destroy his destroy the next ship. Meaning that it's his fate to stay in Japan. And this is shown by how Mariko's death deeply affects both Blackthorn and Toronaga. It serves as a catalyst for Blackthorn's transformation and leaves a lasting impact on Toronaga's path to becoming Shogun. Her memory continues to inspire and guide them as they navigate the challenges ahead. But there's a huge connection. The episode title and the title's words back in episode 2 is a crucial detail that has something of intrigue 
to the finale's meaning. Shogun finale, much like the ebb and flow of the tides, leave us with a sense of bittersweetness and a sea of emotions. Instead of the epic battle climax that I was discussing, the episode delivers a quieter, more introspective conclusion that focus on the character's internal journeys and the, and the echoes of the past. Even in her absence, Mariko presence remains a guiding force. Her death is a turning point for Blackthorn, pushing him to confront his self-serving nature and embrace a path of selflessness. The scene where Fuji released Mariko crossing to the sea is both heartbreaking and hopeful. It symbolized letting go of the past while acknowledging the enduring legacy of her sacrifice. Toronaga achieves his goal of becoming Shogun, ushering a new era of peace and unity for Japan. However, his victory is filled with loneliness that the Taiko said, the man who stands at the greatest height is alone. The episode title, A Dream of a Dream, directly referenced the Taiko's words, reminding us that even the most ambitious dreams can come at a steep price. Turinac's journey to power has been paved with loss and difficult choices, leaving us to wonder whether the ultimate price is worth the sacrifices made. But if you think about it, the sacrifice that he wants and the ultimate price is for the future of Japan and build a society like we see up to this point in Japan. While Toronaga deals with the events from afar, Lady Ashiva blossoms as a key player in the finale. Her decisions influenced by a profound moment of connection with Mariko's final words significantly impact the power dynamics and ultimately lead to Ishido's downfall. Let's explore her role as the poetic seeds of change that she builds. So initially aligned with Ishido out of a shared animosity towards Turunaga and hate, Ochiba perspective Shiv as she witnessed these consequences of Ishido's ruthless ambition and the increasing instability within Osaka Castle. Mariko's dead becomes a catalyst for change. The poem she leaves behind, one on a, on a leafless branch, flowers are only flowers because they fall, but thankfully the wind. The scene where Tiva reads Mariko poem while her son touched a leafless branch is pivotal. The imagery of the poem with the physical connection to the branch, I imagine sparks a realization within Oshiba. He recognized the nature of life and dead, understanding that sacrifice and loss are inedible, but also that new beginnings can emerge from endings. This realization combined with her love for her son made her reevaluate her allegiance and understanding what happened and why the battle of Sekigahara doesn't happen in this show it's because of this moment. Although Oshiva doesn't imply it or say she's gonna choose to support Toronaga, we see how he wants to make sure the heir's army remains neutral in the conflict. This decision is likely influenced by her desire to protect her son and prevent further bloodshed. Okay, now, the battle of Sekihara, what happened? Instead, it focused on the aftermath and the consequences of the choice made by Toronaga, Blackthorn, and Ashiba. Some viewers like me may feel a sense of anticlimax due to the lack of battle scenes. However, the episode focused on character development and the long-term implications of the conflict within the show overall thematic approach. The episode title also A Dream of a Dream hints at the nature of power and the cyclical nature of history. The focus is not on the immediate victory but on the but on the enduring legacy of the character's actions. We see glimpses of the aftermath with Ishido defeated and Turnaga emerging as a, the undisputed shogun, not defeated but receiving the letter from Ochiva. The episode emphasized the establishment of a new era of peace and unity for Japan under Turnaga's rule and everyone that died to make that happen. But now analyzing the episode and knowing that, hey, Turunaga didn't go this far not to become Shogun. He wanted to do this. He wanted this title. He wanted the, the glory of it. And he knew the consequences or the actions that were gonna happen in the, in the middle. So that makes me a little bit mad that he made everyone die, suffer in a way just for him to have this title. Now, something that I found really beautiful is how Fuji embarks on this new journey as a nun, finding peace in her fate and seeking to honor the memory of her family and Mariko. Yeah, what she could journey in this episode is also a tragic descent from the manipulator to a man consumed by guilt and facing his inedible dead. Let's explore what happened to this character that leads to his downfall and the impact 
of his choices. Yabushi Game Bobman in Medical's Dead weighs heavily on him. He's consumed by guilt and remorse, evident in his behavior and desperate pleas for a good dead. The once confident and scheming warlord is reduced to a shell of his former self, haunted by the consequences of his actions. In a moment of surprising honesty, Toronaga reveals the true extent of his plan to him before his death. He explains how medical action were the key to his victory and how he orchestrated events to secure his position as Shogun. This revelation leaves Yabuchigi with a sense of awe and perhaps a touch of bitterness, realizing he was merely a pawn in Turanaga grand scheme. Also, his dead poem with his raw and cynical tone reflects his acceptance of his fate. Now, the episode is filled with symbolism and emotional beats that deepen the connection to the characters and their journeys. Some of them are Turanaga, Turanaga and the water, the scene of Turanaga swimming connects back to an earlier episode when he learned the skill from Blackthorn. It symbolizes his adaptability and willingness to embrace new challenges, reflecting his growth as a leader. Something that I found really interesting is when Ochiva silenced during the council meeting, which speaks volume about her internal conflict. It suggests a shift in her allegiance and a growing realization of Ishido's true nature. Also, the well-timed earthquake emphasized the uncertainty and the shifting power dynamics, foreshadowing the downfall of Ishido and the dawn of a new era. But the final scene of Blackthorn and the villagers pulling the, the ship from the sea is a powerful image of resilience and hope. The episode ends with Turunaga looking at Blackthorn, Blackthorn looking at Turunaga with a sense of acceptance and hey, also accepting their differences. But that's the episode, episode 10. I was really hoping for more and I feel not disappointed, but I love the way they adapted things like the Battle of Sekihara, which I wanted to see with the CGI, with the FX. Yeah, I want it to be huge, but <laughs> it wasn't. So I was expecting this battle to at least show up what happened, at least people fighting, which is a huge battle that maybe they changed this because of the BFX. So who knows? The finale leaves us with a sense of hope for the future while acknowledging the sacrifices made and the challenges that lie ahead. The series was beautiful. There's no denying how they did it, adapting the book, changing a few things, which that's my next video expected later today, comparing the 1980 to this version. But what are your thoughts on episode 10? My name is Christian from Game Premiere. Hope you like this video. Thank you so much for the support you have been giving this channel. Truly, truly grateful. My name is Christian from Game Premiere, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.